The Radetsky class was the last Austro-Hungarian pre-dreadnought class to be built, and falls into the category of other classes such as the Lord Nelsons and Dantons in being so-called semi-dreadnoughts, showing a clear advance over previous designs, but not reaching the all-big gun layout of true dreadnoughts. The class consisted of three ships, Radetsky, Erzazog Franz Ferdinand, with that said, they almost brought Austria-Hungary to the forefront of naval technology, as when they were first designed in 1905, there were a number of options considered, as shown on this table. As you can see, options 3 and 4 followed the dreadnought design philosophy, although in both cases, the additional guns were in wing turrets that would have meant a broadside of 6 or 5 guns respectively, unless echelon turrets were considered. Whilst this would have put them in the same category as the Espana-class Dreadnoughts of Spain, it would have been just enough to make the leap. Unfortunately, the additional weight of these guns would have pushed the displacement of the ships above the 16,000 tonne limit that the Austro-Hungarian shipyards were capable of at the time, and so the, these designs were not selected. Instead, the final design listed was chosen, which included a significant number of large secondary guns in wing turrets, as well as a light tertiary battery. This left an armament of four 12-inch guns in a pair of twin turrets, one forward and one aft, a secondary battery of eight 9.4-inch guns in four twin turrets, two on each side, and a tertiary battery of 20 3.9-inch guns, along with a wide-ranging array of other weapons that included four 70mm anti-aircraft guns, a pair of 66mm landing guns, and four 47mm anti-torpedo boat guns. Three small torpedo tubes completed the extensive weapons loadout on a hull that hit 16,000 tonnes as of the upper weight limit when fully loaded. With a main armour belt of 9.1 inches and a speed of just over 20 knots, they were slightly under-armoured but somewhat faster than other later pre-dreadnoughts. However, unusually for this type of ship, and in part because of their later construction dates, they had a more extensive underwater protection system than many ships of this era and of this type. Specifically, the ships had a system unique to Austria-Hungary that involved armouring the ship's double bottom as well, instead of using the armour purely to stop incoming shells. This meant that any explosion had to be strong enough to rupture the armour plates as well as just the hull. However, by the time they were completed in 1910 and 1911, they were truly obsolete, as the first super dreadnoughts were coming into service around this time. But it must also be considered that they weren't planning to fight Britain or Germany. Rather, the enemy was planned to be some combination of Italy and or France, both of which were also lagging behind in the dreadnought race and had also built semi-dreadnought type ships quite late, against which the Austro-Hungarian vessels compared relatively favourably, at least on paper. The ships had a relatively quiet career in the few years running up to World War I, with Radetsky herself present at the British Coronation Review at Spithead, alongside numerous other nations' battleships. During the Balkan Wars, the three ships took part in, a, in an international fleet demonstration protesting the war, and conducted the first seaplane launch operations from a major capital ship. During the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian fleet was called upon by the German Mediterranean Division, consisting of the battlecruiser SMS Goben and the light cruiser SMS Breslau, for assistance in getting out of the port that they'd been in at the start of the war, since British ships had begun to assemble off Messina in an attempt to trap the Germans. The Austro-Hungarian High Command was wary of instigating a war with Great Britain and ordered the fleet to avoid the British ships and to only openly support the Germans if they were in Austro-Hungarian waters. In October 1914, the French installed heavy artillery in support of the Army of Montenegro for use against the Austrians. An attempt to dislodge the batteries with the pre-dreadnoughts of the Habsburg class failed as their 9.4-inch guns were not powerful enough, and so the Radetsky was sent in to assist them. Her 12-inch guns were powerful enough to force the French to abandon the position, and later on, in May 1915, all three ships bombarded the Italian naval base at Ancona in, after Italy entered the war on the side of the Triple Entente. As the war drew to a close, Austria prepared to transfer her entire fleet to Yugoslavia to keep it out of Italian hands. One day before the armistice, Yugoslav officers with scratch crews sailed Radetsky and Zrini out of Pola just as the Italian fleet arrived. The two battleships flew American flags and sailed south, 
They then called on American forces to meet them and accept a surrender, so two battleships surrendered to a squadron of American submarine chasers, which happened to be the only American vessels around. However, the Allied powers ignored the transfer of the Austro-Hungarian ships and insisted the ships were to be ceded to Italy and not Yugoslavia. Radetzky and Zrini were therefore broken up in Italy in 1920, while Ertz Herzog Franz Ferdinand survived until 1926, when she too was scrapped in Italy. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.